check it out. This is my water wheel turbine. And on my last video, I had an overwhelming number of suggestions to change one thing. And that was to make it an actual water wheel by adding these sides to it. Right here, I have my old one. As you can see, it was open on the ends, which allowed water just to escape from the sides. And this was potentially ruining efficiency within the turbine because water was allowed to just escape rather than having to turn all the way around to be released. My reasoning behind this was it saved a lot of material doing this. And the other reason being is there's so much water flow there that I actually think there's a possibility that the constant water hitting it might act better than having it trapped. Because once the water's trapped in here, any new water might, like obviously it might displace some of the water that's in there, but for the most part, it's just gonna kind of roll off the top. So that's kind of the reason behind that. But if you wanna see more detailed breakdown of this project, check out my first video. But the inside of it is a hub motor off an e-bike. The outside is a 3D printed impeller or water wheel as we'll call it. It is then connected to metal 3D printed parts provided to me by PCBWay. And huge shout out, this really made this project come together. I wasn't sure how I was gonna do it without them. So if you guys need any 3D printing services, make sure to check them out. They offer ABS, PLA, resin prints. And then when you get into the metal, they offer aluminum, 316 steel, tool steel, and titanium. So they offer a lot of materials, really great to work with. So if you have any questions, just send them an email and I'm sure they'd be glad to help you out. So continuing on, it then connects to metal tubing right here to a 3D printed brace in the middle. And this resembles a pool ladder, and just a ladder, I guess. And that's probably what we'll call it, but it allows me to hold it farther down at the end. And if I flip it around, you'll see here, there's actually two on the top, and then there's screws going through the top, so they really can't slide. I thought this would be an issue, but in the last time they didn't move at all. So these screws are overkill, but I'd rather them be there than not. And then with that as well, we have paracord hooked onto just a little S-clip so I can wrap it around the railing when we get there for a little additional security because we'd hate to lose this entire project. So without further ado, let's get over and do some testing. We've now made it to the testing site with a real feel of about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's head over and do some testing. All right, as always, we're gonna throw it over with no load connected to get a voltage reading. And then we're gonna connect two meters because in the last video, if you haven't seen it, link below, uh, we did a test and it made 34 watts of power. So we know that it can power two meters. So if it makes more power or too much power for those two, we'll connect the third one and do a test with that. So before we freeze, let's get it thrown over the edge. From the last test, if you remember, the farther I held it down, the more power it made. And that's because gravity has more time to pull that water down, thus increasing its kinetic energy. So I'm probably gonna get something maybe to lay on and let's connect the heaters. And then when I get a heater connected, I'll lay it farther down. But 13 volts is pretty good. And I think it's kind of similar to what we got last time. So let's get it connected and get a power output. We've now got the two heaters connected and I've got my towel, so. Let's throw it over the edge and see if we can beat 34 watts and then we'll try connecting that third meter like I said. It's flickering. Try disconnecting one of them. Eight watts. Yeah. It jumped up like to 10. Let me hold it lower. And if it starts making a good amount of power, do you want to connect that second one? Yeah. I'm just going to uh, hold it like I did last time. Yeah. 
and, and while I'm doing that, why don't you like, comment, and uh, subscribe on here for me? did the power go down so did the temperature but it is because the water wasn't flowing out the sides allowing constant new higher velocity water to hit it so what would you guys want me to test next because i added these on power went down other than increasing the size of the bucket and obviously gearing and there's there's multiple different ways but in this design right here what would you guys change so i think what i'm going to do next is maybe delete both of these i might try and space it out a bit farther or i might try and start utilizing these gears right here via chain so what would you guys like to see uh i want to also thank you for helping me hit a thousand subscribers before the end of the year i was here less than a week ago filming i didn't think i was gonna be able to do it and here we are so another great video maybe not great power production but great video i'll see you guys next time